I am both fascinated and thrilled that Chronicles of Illyria is going to have such a firm root in astrology, and as Soulbound Studios has always done, they're creating everything from the ground up. That means we're getting a completely fresh perspective on a zodiac system, which, while similar to the real world's 12 houses, is nevertheless thematically quite different. Chronicles of Illyria players will find that their character is impacted not only by the system of planets, but by the zodiac systems that they will travel through. There are 12 houses of the zodiac that Soulbound has created. As Caspian said in the Q&A on June 20th, there is a lot of symbolism, or as he called it, deep stuff. The creatures that have been chosen to represent these houses of the zodiac were picked for very specific reasons. Here's where I want to do my deep dive. As I looked through the animals that Soulbound Studios has revealed, it became very quickly apparent that those zodiac houses were masterfully crafted to fit the aspects of these creatures they had already showcased. Let's leap into that. Bear in mind that these things are as always subject to change. First, we have the Otter Bear, the House of Domain. Personal possessions, wealth, fame, renown, and character. The first thing that comes to mind for me is how common of a creature this will be. As you can see on the wiki page for Chronicles of Valyria, creatures are rated on a scale of rarity from pets, common and uncommon, to rare and legendary. The Otter Bear is a common creature, which is no surprise given how popular they will be for transportation. This certainly relates to the domain of fame and renown. Otter Bears will undoubtedly help players acquire fame and wealth as they travel throughout Valyria. Next, we have the Dryaselk, House of Knowledge, development of knowledge, intelligence, information about world, and learning in general. Dryas Elk are an uncommon creature. Now, the Dryas Elk are prized in Illyria for their fur, of course, but their massive antlers are actually used for protection by Illyrians. A little bit of an intelligent invention, you might say. But the real first thought that comes to mind as I look at these creatures is how prominent their antlers are. They sprout from the crown of this majestic beast's head like a physical depiction of a large web of knowledge reaching outwards towards more information. Then we have the flower porcupine. House of Consciousness, Home, Self, Lands, Origin, and Self-Awareness. This adorable little guy has a form of natural camouflage, but can also store heat efficiently. One might imagine a creature with such a clever form of protection must also be very self-aware, looking out for what is around them. The aspect of home, self, and land also makes a lot of sense, as the flower cup porcupine can take up on any land, anywhere, that they might find greenery, making a cozy place to hide. Then we have the Canis Rabbit, the house of pursuit. Creativity, romance, children, and accomplishing things. Now the Canis Rabbit is a creature we sadly don't know a whole lot about yet, though we do know they're considered very dangerous creatures. If you search the COE Discord, you get constant mentions of how one will not want to mess with them. Why, if I had to make a leap, it's that they're in packs, they're considered social creatures, and are likely fiercely protective of their young. Rabbits in the real world, animal lore, are considered creatures of fertility, but this takes a step farther where these violent Illyrian hunters are using their creative energy to become a concept of accomplishment and of pursuit. Next, we have the Ursifant, the house of toil, career, endeavor, pursuit, and labor. Of the houses, this is perhaps one of the most straightforward to me. The Ursifant are used as mounts and to pull vehicles, which makes sense for the house of toil. They're creatures of physical labor, though they do have a fun fact too. They're like the Illyrian version of a violent Winnie the Pooh, pursuing and killing honeybees in order to steal the honey. Appropriate for the house. Next, we have Lethet, the house of connections. Land, romance, family, obligations, and duties to lords and personal connections. First of all, just look at these guys. They're so cute. They're pets that are most known for being super attached to their masters, riding on shoulders, being playful. But most interestingly, the creatures are empathic, sensing mood in such a way that they're very personally connected. They're also most commonly kept by those in positions with courts, meaning they are literally subservient to lords. Lo and behold, the conifer rat. House of family. Family, resources, obligation, and wealth. These resourceful little guys look like pine cone when they're curled up, meaning that they use their own personal resources to stay hidden. They seem to come in a set of three, which makes me believe this could be one aspect of the family. I'm definitely looking forward to more information on these cuties. Perhaps the fact that they are light sleepers who make a sound when woken up by movement means that they might help protect families by providing a sort of alarm. 
and maybe their training for reconnaissance and infiltration makes them a logical house for those trying to acquire wealth in more subtle ways. Number eight, we have the Domino Fox, House of Wisdom, associated with religion, scholastic pursuit, and personal development. Foxes in real life are known for being related to cunning, moving past illusions, and seeing things clearly. For this reason, I imagine that the Illyrian Domino Fox has been selected for the House of Wisdom due to some of the real-life association and spiritual circles, but also for the adaptation of having a natural domino mask on their face. This is an evolutionary adaptation that allows the Domino Fox to dig into snow and ice, as well as to protect from porcupines. This is very literally an advanced form of personal development across generations, allowing the fox to pursue whatever it will. Next, the Terraguin, House of Status, Financial Success, Reputation, Community, Politics, and Prestige. First of all, just look at this majestic guy. He looks like he's in a suit ready to tackle the biggest business meeting of his life. They hunt to kill and have a well-known reputation for being dangerous. They pretty well get what they want, making them a logical governor of the House of Status. One might call them large and in charge. On to the Trison, House of Community. Organizational success, belonging, legislation, regulation, politics. With similar coverage of politics to the Terraguin, it's not surprising that the Trison is associated with community and success. Trisons, like the Ursifons, will be used as mounts or to pull vehicles, but they're also used in war and are considered social creatures. Those who find themselves behind an army of trained war Trison will certainly be more likely to find success and political standing. The Wildcat, House of Self. Personality, identity, image, and beginnings. Of all the fauna revealed in Illyria so far, there's not a whole lot known about the Shrubland Wildcat. They are cats, however, which are often full of personality. I'm curious to learn more about their story. Perhaps they have some excellent lore to come. And finally, we have the Phoenix, House of the Arcane. Secrets, the unknown, self-sacrifice, loss, and deception. Now, foremost, we have no concept art from Soulbound yet on what phoenixes in Illyria will look like. Geez, talk about a secret. They're literally un unknown. According to lore, they're mythical beings rumored to live amongst the ancients having survived the burning. This definitely seems to tie in well with loss. They don't possess a soul and are not sentient, but will be reborn when they die like traditional phoenixes. Is this a part of the deception, I wonder? Above all, being the House of the Arcane, the Phoenixes represent a constant reminder that once upon a time, magic did exist in Illyria. Although there are still many more bits of lore, history, and biology to come out about these creatures, we can nevertheless see that Soulbound Studios' creative team is taking this topic of the Zodiac deeply into consideration. I personally cannot wait to be an Illyrian astrologer. And now I ask you, what did you think about the Zodiac reveal?